Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Black's Chapel in the house. All right. This is the day that the Lord has made. I don't know about you all, but I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord once again. Brought us across another safe week. We're here. We are blessed, and we should be more than thankful. Let us stand, please. Our young adults are going to get ready to make their way in. And let us just get ready to lift up this great God of ours. Isn't he worthy to be praised? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Give everybody a minute to get to their responsive reading on the inside of our bulletin. And it is found in the book of Proverbs, the first chapter, verses 1 through 4. And when we have found this, let's give a hearty praise the Lord, if you will. And we'll give everybody, everybody a minute to get settled. Because we're in the presence of God. Let us just start service and let us just lift up his name. We are here to worship him and him alone. And when you found these words, please give a hearty praise the Lord, if you will, in your bulletin. Praise the Lord. Yes, indeed. And we'll find these words. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. For receiving instructions and prudent behavior, doing what is right and just and fair altogether, for giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. Amen. Our hymn this morning, Blessed Assurance. Now, if you have a blessed assurance in this great God of ours, I, I, sing this song like you truthfully do. Because you've got to, in this day and time, you've got to have a blessed assurance. Look at all the situations that we're facing. From the Capitol Hill back here and there east and west look at the storms that have come through and that are going to come through you've got to have a blessed assurance not in yourself not in this church not in the denomination that you're affiliated with but you've got to have it in the only one source and that is God himself through Christ Jesus does that not make sense amen I thought it would blessed assurance yes Jesus is mine, yes he is. Oh, what a voice of glory divine, yes sir. There was no nation, yes, yes. Jesus of God, yes, we are. Lord of his spirit, yes we are.
Are you happy? Are you happy? Yeah. Good morning. You know, when we look around, we see that the world is a dangerous place. I'm not just talking about the tornadoes the other night, but we also are encountering fires, earthquakes, floods, mass shootings, pandemics, wars, and, and the list goes on and on. But one thing that we do know, that God is in control. And it, was, and it was brought out this morning in Sunday school so eloquently that he is in control and nothing happens without him ha causing it to happen. He is in, he is in charge. It's now time for our morning devotion. If you would, please join with me as we go to, go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We come in the spirit of thanksgiving. Father, first of all, we thank you for who you are. You are Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end, the first and the last. We come acknowledging you, Father, as the creator, maker, and sustainer of all things. Father, we thank you for the breath of life. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for lying down last night and arising up this morning with the roof over our head, food on the table, clothes on our back, Heavenly Father, and clothes in our right mind, giving us a mind to come out to serve and to worship and praise you this morning. Father, we thank you for every individual, every household represented here this morning, Heavenly Father. Not just here at Black Chapter, Father, but for every congregation and every church door that's open wide in your name. Father, we know that it's only because of you and because of your grace and your mercy that we are here and, and that we are so richly blessed. And we fall this morning just to say thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you have done, all that you're doing in the present chapter and all that you're going to do in the future. Heavenly Father, Father, but most of all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who hung, bled, and died for our sins. Because he died, we have been redeemed, Heavenly Father. We thank you for the finished work of the cross, Heavenly Father. We thank you for the blood that was shed, the body that was bruised for the remission of our sins. Heavenly Father, we pray that you bless in a, in a special way. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our pastor and church family, Heavenly Father. We pray that you would bless him this morning as you come forth and break the bread of life. Heavenly Father, we pray it should be our will that his word would not go out and return void, Heavenly Father. Father, we, we know that we pray that every ear will be a listening ear and that we, we, be, we will be receptive to that word and apply it to our daily lives. Father, we pray that you bless those that are victimized by those recent hurricanes and tornadoes here. Heavenly Father, we pray that you watch over those that are sick and afflicted, those that are bereaved, Heavenly Father. Father, those that are recovering, Heavenly Father, bless them in a special way. Father, we, we, we lift those up in hospitals and nursing homes, convalescent homes, Heavenly Father. Father, we pray that you be with the young people, Heavenly Father, and, their educa and the educators, those that have dedicated their lives to molding the minds and the spirits and the character of our young people. Heavenly Father, we pray that you bless the, the first responders, Heavenly Father, the emergency personnel, the military personnel, Heavenly Father, the law enforcement, political officials, and for all of those that are in the business for helping others. Father, Father, we pray that you forgive us for our sins. Just take every single sin and cast it into a sea of forgetfulness, and we'll sin no more, but come and cheer that you would have us to be. Father, we need you. We need you. We can't get along without you, Heavenly Father. 
Father, we pray that you bless us now as we go through the service this morning. And we pray that something will be said, something will be done that was put in your sight. And that you bless every auxiliary, auxiliary and every individual that, puts, that participated in the service this morning, Heavenly Father. This is another blessing we ask in Jesus' name. We pray and give thanks. Amen. This now concludes our morning devotion. We pray that you will continue to keep each other lifted up in prayer. Amen. Good morning, Black Chapel. Amen. Hey, we can do a little bit better about that. Better than that. Good morning, Black Chapel. Good morning. Let's give God a hand clap of praise this morning. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. Man, it has been what a week. But God is good. God is good. God is good as I watched the devastation up in North Mississippi, up in the Delta. Even though my heart breaks for the people, at the same time, I still have to thank God. Because that could have easily been us. That could have easily been us. Amen. So we want to declare this morning that in spite of everything, that we serve a great God. In spite of everything, we serve a great God. And make it personal for you. No matter what you are dealing with, you still serve a great God. Can I get a good, can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Amen. 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 We're going to sing this congregational song. Help us sing it. Amen. First thing, the splendor of a king. Clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. The court says, how great. Is our God sing with me? How great is our God? Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God? Y'all got it. Come on, help us sing. How great is our God? Sing with me. How great is our God? Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. I got another verse. Verse says this. Age to age he stands, and time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The God has three in one. Father, Spirit, and Son. The Lion and the Lamb. The Lion and the Lamb. Oh, how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we see how great. How great is our God. Come on, praise this morning. Say, how great, hallelujah. 
sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Oh, you're the name above all names, name above all names. Worthy of all praise. My heart will sing how great is our God. There's no one like you. Your name above all names, name above all names. You're worthy of all my praise. My heart will sing how great is our God. Oh, how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we'll sing how great, how great. Is our God. Come on. Come on. Give God some praise this morning. Give God some praise this morning. If you don't have a reason to praise him, let him give you a reason. He woke you up this morning. If you don't have a reason, let me give you another reason. He woke you up this morning. If you still don't have a reason, let me give you another reason. He woke you up this morning. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, hallelujah, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, we want to sing it one more time, oh, how great is our God, sing with me how great is our God, oh, we we'll sing how great, how great is our God. Oh, 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 how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we we'll sing how great, how great is our God. Another songwriter say this. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art! How great thou art! Yeah. Come on, give it to him. Go give it to him. Not for me, but give it to him. Give it to him. We owe him. We owe him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
one thing if the people of God will ever realize they're not just mouthing and just saying words but your praise is a weapon your praise is a weapon somebody didn't hear that but your praise to God is a weapon and I guarantee you if you use that weapon wisely you can put away any fear you can put to flight any demonic force any spirit that's not of God yes and you can usher in hallelujah you can usher in yes. this true and living God he's not dead yes i heard one of the deacons right here say he's still in charge he's in control but your praise is your weapon i refuse to come to the house of prayer, assembling ourselves together in here. Doesn't matter what your problem is. Doesn't matter what your issue is. Doesn't matter. Because folks will count you out, but you don't count yourself out. God don't count you out. Your praise is a weapon that God has given to you as saints of God. Now, what you do with it is up to you. Once again, like I said, that's why I refuse to come to the house of prayer and sit idly by and act like I don't know him. And act like he's not here. I wouldn't come to your house and treat you that way. So don't come to his house and treat him that way. If it's not but one person in that choir law, if it's not but one minister in this pulpit, if it's not but one person back there, two or three touching together in a grin, God is there in the midst. Now, I'm, I said that because it's in my spirit, and I, I'm looking out upon some of you all, and some of y'all sitting there like, like you've lost your best buddy. Like your house has been blown away. Your lives has been turned upside down. So what if it has? The God that you serve, the one that put breath in your body, the one that handed just said, woke you up this morning, brought you here, deserves some exuberant praise. He deserves to know that you are alive. Now, it matters not what somebody thinks about me because I, I made up my mind a long time ago. I'm going to stand where he puts me. If he puts me out there in the field, in the corner, in the ditch, here, there, wherever, I'm going to stand and do the best that I can. Because when it's all over with, I've got to answer to him. We learned in Sunday school this morning that he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. So I don't know what you came in here, this house to do today or to look upon or to see whatever your fester might be. But if you didn't come to worship and praise him in spirit and in truth, something is wrong. You need to back up and come back the right way. Amen. Those of you visiting with us at home by way of the Internet, we greet you in the precious name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, because this is what we are here for. Amen. This is what it's all about. Our pastor is back. His family, he's blessed. We're back. Those of you that went on spring break, you're back. You're blessed. My heart goes out, as Reverend Hender said, to the people in Rolling Fork, Silver City, and all around. Our love is there for them, and any support that we can give them, we're going to do it. But most importantly, our prayers are going to be there with them. Because like he said, that could have been us. That could have easily been, it's always somebody around. And for those of you that never been in that position, I can tell you right now, you don't want to be in it. So be thankful for what you have. Be thankful for your family. Be thankful for the church that you have. Be thankful for the God that's still there with you and haven't abandoned you because he's not an abandoner. He says, I did, and I've declared myself, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Now, if that's not enough to put a smile on somebody's heart, and give you a peace and a sense of encouragement of hope, then I don't know what will. Praying and hoping for you that are visiting, as I said, by way of internet, satellite, what have you, be thankful. Because we love you because God first loved us. We love you with the love of God that he has given us. We pray for you and with you and do likewise for us. You know, it behooves me when I just look out among the people of God. And when I say the people of God, I'm talking about the universal church. And when the spirit shows you what's there, you have a work. We have a work to do. That is first and foremost lifting him up 
If we lift them up, what will he do? He'll do all the drawing. Let's make Christianity what it's really worth for its purpose. That is, lifting up this great God of ours and letting him draw men, women, boys, and girls unto him. Your children would be much better. Your lives at home would be much better. Our schools would be much better. And our neighborhoods would be much better. Amen. It's up to us to do what we are supposed to do through the working of God's spirit. Now, you might say, well, he's giving us a little lecture here this morning, but I'm going to pour out to you what the spirit is pouring out to me. And it starts first and foremost with me and everybody else. A revival breaks out. And before you know it, the fire starts burning and everything catches on fire. And when God's fire comes through, it's a fire that's unquenchable. And it's going to cleanse and clear everything in its path. And only those that are of his will be able to stand. Let us be thankful and let us remember to lift this great God up wherever we go. Does that not make sense? I, I thought it would. With that out of the way, we are ready to lift up this great God of ours. We're ready to go on and run on and see what he has in store for us. And when it gets to the preaching part, I don't know about you all, but I'm so excited because I know he's going to give us a word today that we can use. Amen. He's going to give us a word today that's going to encourage our hearts, our fainted hearts. He's going to give us a word that's going to establish us in him. If you hadn't been established, you need to be established in him, not in nobody else and nothing else, but in him. That's your purpose. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let you borrow these if you need them. Now. <laughs> Amen. 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 Uh, you have to stand up. You have to stand up. <laughs> yes, we. There you go, sister. Amen. Amen. And we certainly thank God for you. Will there be any others? Is there anybody else? We don't want to miss anybody. Sister Woods, one, okay, one, okay. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Anybody else? Amen. Amen. Well, with that being said, we do love you with the love of God that he has given us. And we just like to express and pray much for us. And we'll pray much for you. And we're going to get ready now for our announcer as we do our we love you with the love of the Lord. again, Black's Chapel. Our announcements are as follows. The youth department leaders would like to meet with all parents and children who are interested in participating in the Easter program immediately after service today in the prayer room. Amen. Easter speeches and program assignments will be given during the meeting. Please see Sister Elena Tate. Thank you. The youth Easter fellowship and fun hunt will take place on Saturday, April 8th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m immediately following the rehearsal of the program, and that time will be announced. Amen. Our program, Easter program, will be Sunday, April 9th, and that time will be announced as well. Amen. Jackson District Missionary Baptist Association is hosting a Mr., Mrs., and Miss pageant. The, the winning participants will receive a trophy, certificate, gift bag, and a gift card. Crowning will take place on May 20th, 2023 from 9 a.m. to noon mm -hmm. at New Mount Zion MB Church on Maple Street in Jackson. For additional information, please see Dr. Lucille Brown. Thank you. Amen. Mississippi Public Broadcasting, all daycare teachers, parents, homeschool kids, and daycare students are invited to participate in a learning center. Explore, discover, grow day. This event will be on the second Thursday of each month 
from 10 a.m. to noon. This is to promote PBS Kids show. Amen. Please contact Evangelist Barbara Woodard. Thank you. Amen. We have a celebration. If Sister Elena Tate would please stand. She is the Jackson Public School Administrator of the Month for Key Elementary. They are doing great things over at Key. Thank you, Sister Lana Tate. Okay, our birthdays for the week. On Monday, March 27th, we have Michael Hoxett Jr. Oh, and Caitlin Jones. Mm -hmm. On Tuesday the 28th, we have Jessica Robinson. On the 31st, we have Sister Talian Hines. Oh. And we have a special birthday on today. Is Michael Ross, Deacon Michael Ross. Would you please stand? Oh. Happy birthday. <laughs> church prayer list, we have Sister Barbara Carter, in, she's in St. Dominic Hospital, Sister Mary Cooper, mother of so, Deacon, sorry, mother of Dennis Williams, we have Deacon Charles and Sister Madeline Bell, we have Tyler Pfizer, the nephew of Mother Wyndham and Deacon Melvin Pfizer, Brother Turner Curry, Joshua Henderson, Sister Jessie Bell Williams, the mother of Brother Curtis Watson, and also be in continued prayer with Sister Blue, Reverend Cole, and Sister Bennett. And also, as they stated, the Mississippi Delta storm victims. Let's be in prayer with them as well. And any others that we're unaware of. These are our announcements. Have a great week.
now at a point in the service where everybody can participate, tithe and offering. As you know, we have various platforms of giving, of giving. If you are not able to worship with us in person, you can go to the Guild of the Fly link, and there's a drop box on the west end of the building, or you may simply mail it in. The church address is 3425 Robinson Street, Jackson 39209. You're now in the hands of the ushers.
Amen. I told you. Get something started. And see what will happen. Let us stand, please. He'll show you what to do. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we come at this hour and at this time. We thank you for this offering that was just taken. Father, we thank you for the ones that gave with a cheerful heart because you love a cheerful giver with a cheerful heart. Father, those that even had a desire to give but had not the funds this time, whether they be here or there, we pray, Father, that they would be able to give and they would give cheerfully on the next go-round, Father, to the glory of you. We know that you're going to bless this offering and it's going to be fulfilled for what it was taken. And, Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we give you the praise, the glory, and all the honor that's due to this offering. We also pause to lift up those that are on our sick and our shut-ins. Father, Reverend Cole and Sister Cole, Sister Blue, Sister Bennett, and others as well, Father, that are on our prayer list. We know, Father, that you are the greatest physician that there is and there ever will be. Touch, Father, in a mighty way. Give them all that they need. Strengthen their bodies, Lord God, and continue to keep them and their families and everyone, Father, here and abroad as well. And those that are bereaving at this time, Father, we lift them up as well. We pray your spirit of comfort and peace upon them because you give a peace that surpasseth all understanding. Yes. To the mercy and the glory of you, Father, those that are incarcerated physically, spiritually, and mentally. We lift up us all because, Father, in some capacity we find ourselves. But you are still the greatest meter of our needs through Jesus. And we thank you for it. We ask, Father, these and all blessings in the rich, the mighty, the powerful, in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen and amen. All things. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own. Say I know 
heaven now I'm laying it at your feet You have every failure, God. You have every victory. Ooh, oh, you say I'm love when I can't feel a thing. And you say I am strong when I think I am weak. And you say I am hell when I said it once and if I had a thousand songs to say it again there is truly a message woven into the fabric of a gospel song the songs that our God will have for us, his people, to sing. The ones who, the ones that recognize and acknowledge him for being who he is in our personal relationship toward him or with him. This God that we serve is a jealous God. Jealous, meaning that he has an expectation you see jealousy follows an expectation if you can't if, if you don't have no expectation then it's impossible for you to be jealous because it really doesn't matter one way or another if you have no expectation But since our God is a jealous God, God has an expectation pertaining to us, his people. And he made us to glorify him. To give honor and to give praises unto our God, Jehovah. Savior. Do not pass me by. For I am just a hitchhiker down here. One who is trying to hitchhike a ride back with Jesus to the other side. To the other side. No matter how blessed and highly favored I may have been on this side. But the other side. As Paul would say, eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, neither have entered. 
all the blessings that God has stored up on the other side of glory. So the more he blesses me on this side, that gives me even a greater expectation for what's going to take place on the other side. Savior, do not pass me by. I am just a hitchhiker. One who is trying to hitchhike his way with Jesus to the other side of glory. And it's all because of what you say. Because of what you say. If you didn't say it, then I could not have too much of an expectation of what may lie on the other side. But Lord, you say. Amen. You say. Do we really believe God's sayings? That is a question that each of us should ask of ourselves each day when God allowed us to awaken to the dawn of a brand new day. Am I going to believe God's sayings throughout this day? Because I know from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, I am going to be challenged all day long. But your sayings gives me something to hold on to. An anchor that is going to hold. A rock that cannot be moved. Because you say, you say, that upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. That's what you say. And it's all about what you say. You say that I. Be lifted up. From the earth. Then you will draw. All men. Unto you. Draw yours unto you and the enemy away. Either God's sin is going to draw you or drive you. They are going to work one of those works every time. Either it is going to draw you or it is going to drive you. And I'd rather be drawn than driven any time by God's sayings. Let's give this choir another great round of applause. <laughs> Did not Our singers and our musicians and our directors bless our hearts Amen. through the abilities and the capabilities and the gifts and the talents in which God addressed each of them with. And when all of God's people come together, what a time. What a time. We are in the midst of a time of a lifetime. It took God giving us life to be a part of this time. So this is a time of a lifetime. A time that may never ever roll around again for one of us or for some of us. But thank God for this time. this time you are in place another time with God 
Our scripture reading this morning comes from the gospel according to St. Mark. The second chapter of that gospel. The gospel according to St. Mark. The second chapter, the first through the fifth verse. It's talking about another time. But there is no time like this time. Because another time is not pr promised. But he has blessed us with this time. The gospel according to St. Mark, the second chapter, the first through the fifth verse. And there we would find these words. And again, he entered into Caponium after some days. And it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway, many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was brawn of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the posset lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. The Bible say again. It's not mentioning anything about what happened the last time. But it spoke on what took place during the present time. This time, again. That time, which represented their present. What happened, what took place when believers met Jesus. During their present meeting with him. The fifth verse say, when Jesus saw There's a whole lot going on during that moment. Amen. Amen. The press was so thick until no one could even squeeze into the sanctuary. Regardless of how urgent of a need that person may have had, he or she did not even have squeezing room. And evidently, Jesus came to church that Sunday looking for something. All right, now. Himself. Yeah. You know, when we come to church, we always come under the mindset and attitude that we come looking for something. Mm -hmm. 
But we're not the only one who comes to church on Sunday morning. Looking for something. But most importantly, Jesus. Just as we come seeking and searching for a ray of hope, ray of light, a ray of whatever the need of your moment may be that drew you there with an expectation of receiving it or finding it there. Jesus also comes with that same expectation. He, 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 he's looking for something. And when you receive what you came from, how do you leave this place? What effect does it have on you when you receive what you came looking for? What difference it makes in your life when you receive that in which you come from? Huh. Well, we can see in this scripture what effect it has on Jesus when he sees what he's looking for. The fifth, fifth verse says, when Jesus saw their faith, In spite of all the commotion that was taking place, yes. out of all the singing and clapping and cheering and shouting and jumping and hooping and hollering, yes, Jesus saw what he came looking for. Yes. The only thing scripture says about the Jesus part is what he saw. All the rest of it is about what others were doing. Yeah. But when they mentioned Jesus directly, it was all about what he saw. Yeah. During the worship service. Yeah. When Jesus saw their faith. He said unto the sick of the palsy. Didn't say a word to those four men. Amen. Nor about them. When it came to act and actions. Toward what they had done. But when we look at the work that took place. Because of what they did. When he saw their faith. Jesus said unto the sick person. Son, all of your sins are forgiven you. Amen. And what initiated that were, was the works that the others had done. Amen. All right. This man did not do anything but just lay there. Yes, sick. Like we have a whole lot of sick folk at home today. Physically, mentally, emotionally, all, there are all kinds of sickness that invades these bodies of ours. And each and every one of us has an unnumberable number of various illnesses that are plaguing our loved ones. Our sons, our daughters, our husbands, our wives, our mothers, our fathers. And, 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 and when Jesus look out there and see He's looking for something. We want to dry, dry, get that point across. It's not all about the sick folk. It's more so about the well ones. But when it comes to influencing God, it's more so about the wellness. If a person is sick, then you should seek him a physician. How many of us have sick folk? Not just talking about physical. That's a norm. These old body of ours come here deteriorating the first moment we proceed forth out of our mother's womb. 
But those other illnesses that plague all of our relatives and friends and neighbors and even ourselves. And the enemy has, 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 has appeared in such a form where he left us feeling helpless toward their situation. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Let us think on this thought. What does God see when he looked at me? And each and every one of us is a me. What does God see? When God looked at me. What we are. Is God's gift unto us. What we are by way of a created being is God's gift unto us. God gave you you. God gave you your heart, your mind, your soul, your eyes, your ears, your arms, your hands, your legs, your feet, and your tongue. What you are is God's gift unto you. And what you do with you are the gifts that you give back unto God. What you do with you are the gifts that you give back to God. And God shaped you for a purpose. And God expects you to make the most out of all the abilities in which he has given you. So the question in which each of us should ask ourselves every day of our lives, what does God benefit from me? What does God benefit from me? And secondly, Am I accomplishing God's purposes for me? What does God benefit from me? And am I accomplishing God's purpose for me? What does God benefit from me? And am I accomplishing God's purpose for me? God's divine purpose for purpose. God's divine purpose for purpose is that none should perish and that all shall be saved. What will a man gain? What will a man profit if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? God's divine purpose for purpose is that none should perish, but rather that all shall be saved. And where there are two or more gathered together in his name, touching and agreeing. 
He declared that I would be a God in the midst. And when God is in the midst, strange and unusual happiness takes place in the midst of your situation. When God is in the midst, because you plus God always adds to your capacity the ability to make impossibilities actual. Meaning that there's always something that you can do to assist God in accomplishing his mission and his purpose for you. There's always something for you to do to assist God in, in, in accomplishing his mission and his purpose for you. Because we need to hear this more than just one time. There is always something for you to do in order for God to accomplish his mission and his purpose for you. As my grandfather used to always tell me, he said, boy, there's always something that you can do to help. If it's not appropriate for you to shoot a gun, then you should pick up a stick. If you can't pick up a stick, then you should throw a brick. If you can't throw a brick, then you should swear. You should tell the enemy, I swear before God that I'm going to tell God on you. I'm going to tell God about how you're holding this child in bondage. I'm going to tell God about how you're holding this child in an unhealthy relationship. I'm going to tell God about how you're holding this child down on his sick bed in some form of addiction I'm going to tell God on you and when you take that problem when you take that situation when you take that trouble to the Lord and tell God about it then God will enlighten you upon what he would have for you to do because the answer to your every problem and the solution to your every situation is simply to know the mind of God God what will you have for me to do When you take that problem, when you take that, that situation, when you take that trouble to the Lord and, 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 and share it with the Lord, the Lord God will reveal unto you what he will have for you to do. Because the answer to your every problem and the solution to your every situation is simply to know the mind of God pertaining to, Lord, what will you have for me? to do because you plus God adds to your capacity the ability to make impossibilities actual some of you may say well this man didn't do anything It's not recorded, not one single word said. And God still did it. And the enemy is more than good. And deliverance upon his body. You. 
trust God as to your capacity and your ability to make impossibilities actual. In our lesson this morning, we will find where the writer is induced, introducing us to this very sick man. Yes. This is my case in point. The episode that took place in biblical history. Our lesson this morning introduced us to this very sick man who had been diagnosed with a very severe case of the palsy. Now this man's illness diagnosed on our today modern medical terminology was that this man was a paraplegic. Meaning that this man was paralyzed throughout his entire body. This man had no use of his legs and no use of his feet, no use of his arms and no use of his hands. And because of this man's physical condition, this man was not able to hold down a public job. Because of this man's physical condition, this man was not able to provide for himself nor for his family. Because of this man's physical condition, this man was not a taxpayer. And because of this man's physical condition, this man's wife toward his family and toward society or his community that he lived in, this man was nothing more than a piece of motionless, useless flesh. And during this man's time in biblical history, anyone who had been diagnosed with such a chronic illness, the cause of its illness would always be accredited to that of sin. Either the sin of the individual or the sins of his or her parents. And before one could be healed or cured from such a chronic illness, first, all of that person's sins must be forgiven him. All of their sins must first be forgiven him. And because of this man's physical condition, this man's worth toward his community was in direct parallel to a sinner's worth toward God. You see, toward God, a sinner is nothing more than a paraplegic. He is a spiritual paraplegic. Why? Because he's paralyzed. God cannot use any part of a sinner's body. God cannot use a sinner's mind, a sinner's heart, a sinner's soul, nor a sinner's spirit. And just like with the paraplegic, before a sinner can become of any worth to God, first, all of his sins must be forgiven him. All of his sins must be forgiven him. Now, in spite of this man's physical condition, in spite of this man's situation. This man had one thing. One thing. That's what a youth factor comes in. Right there is where God insert the youth factor. In spite of this man's physical condition, in spite of this man's, all of this man's dilemma, this man had one thing working for him. This man had just one thing working in his favor. And that one thing was this man had some friends. I say again, this man had some friends. Now, he, he did not have the type of friends that some of us may have. He did not have the type of friends that some of us may have. He did not have the type of men that we gather together with on Friday and Saturday night and go bar hopping with. He did not have the type of friends that we slip and slide and rip and wave in the darkness of the night and to drink whiskey and smoke dope with. He did not have the type of friends that when you leave church on Sunday afternoon, you go home and get on the telephone and call him up and gossip with. No, this man has some church going, Bible reading, prayerful, tied 
hand. Holy of those field type friends. The type friends that all of us should be toward one another. The type friends that all of us should surround ourselves with. The type friends who can get a prayer through for you. The type friends who can connect you to God. That's what David meant in the number one number of songs. When David stated, blessed, blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standing in the way of sinners, nor sitting in the seat of the scumful. He shall be like a tree which is planted by a river waters that brings forth his fruit in season, whose leaves shall never wither, and everything he doeth shall prosper, because the Lord know the way of the righteous, and the way of the ungodly shall perish. This man's friends had some righteous ways. This man's friends knew the ways of the righteous. And there's no doubt in my mind, Black Chapel, that this man's friends were in church that Sunday morning when Jesus preached down in the city of Galilee, when he preached that sermon about if you have faith, if you have faith, the size of a mustard seed, you can speak to Yonder's mountain. It's a mountain move. Mountain would pick itself up and catch itself into the doors of, into the depths of the sea. And when Jesus had opened the door of the church, there came pressing her way through the crowd, this same woman, the same woman who had an issue of blood for 12 long years crying out if I could just touch if I could just touch the hem of his garment I know I'll be made whole I wonder this morning black chapel do we have any pressers in the house do we have any pressers in the house those who are pressing your way pressing your way through unemployment pressing your way through addiction pressing your way through a, a troubling relationship pressing your way through some form of illness I say unto you Press on, press on, because your healing, your deliverance, your breakthrough, your victory is only a hand reach away. Just a hand reach away. No doubt this man's friends were in church that Sunday morning when Jesus preached that sermon. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. Ask and it shall be given unto you. And when the announcer got up to make it announcements, it announced that next Sunday Jesus is going to be preaching at those men's church at those friends church and when Sunday morning came around those friends got together and they said unto them saying well maybe maybe if we can just get our friends to come to church Sunday morning if we can get our friends to see Jesus maybe Jesus will heal him too maybe Jesus will heal him too and each one of those men bent over, reached down, and picked up a corner of the cot. One man did not have to carry the whole load all by himself, but they carried it in unison. They carried it together. Oh, if we had that type spirit in the church today, if we had that type mentality in the church today, if we had that type spirit in the church today, where every born again baptized believer were willing to reach down and pick up their corner of the cot, was willing to carry their own share of the load, their own share of the load, what would happen? The year of Jubilee would return back to the church. The year of Jubilee would return back to the body of Christ. The year of Jubilee, that's what Peter meant when Peter stated that a husband, a husband can be saved through the conduct of his wife. And since our God has no respect of a person, that also means that a wife can be saved through the conduct of a husband. Children can be saved through the conduct of their parents. Co-workers can be saved by the conduct of their neighbors. If every born again baptized believer in the church was willing to reach down and pick up their corner of the cart, willing to carry their own share of the load, then the year of Jubilee would return back to the church. The year of Jubilee would return back to the body of Christ. By way of vicarious faith, by way of vicarious faith, and vicarious faith is when your faith, when your work and your conduct is in sync with God's will and God's mission. God's will and God's mission. When your faith, your work, your conduct is in sync with God's will and God's purpose. God's will and God's purpose. And what God will do, he will take the reward of your work. He will take the reward of your faith. He will take the reward of your conduct and, and, co and communicate it to another to another let me say that again he will take the reward of your faith 
the reward of your work, the reward of your, 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 your conduct, and communicate it to that of another. You see, Jesus was a vicarious sacrifice. Jesus suffered in our stead. Jesus bled in our stead. Jesus died in our stead. That we may have the right to the tree of eternal life. If every born again baptized believer in the church was willing to reach down and pick up their corner of the cart, willing to carry their own share of the load. Look at this man. Look at these men. When they heard that Jesus was at church, each one of those men, they reached down and they picked up a corner of the cart. They carried this man to the church where Jesus was. And because of the press, they couldn't get through the door. So what they did, they reached and got a ladder and they laid it up against the roof of the house and they climbed up the ladder, carrying the one who was sick of the palsy. When they got on the rooftop, they tore a hole in the roof and let their friend down where Jesus was. And when Jesus saw their faith, Jesus said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, all of your sins are forgiven you. All of your sins. If every born again baptized believer in the church was willing to reach down and pick up their corner of the cart, willing to carry their own share of the load, then the year of Jubilee, when God forced the devil to release it all, whole lot of our family, whole lot of our friends, whole lot of our children, whole lot of our parents, whole lot of our whatever are still in bondage because of us. God has made a way out of nowhere. It's not all about their ways. It's more so about our ways. Because our God is standing willing and ready to communicate the reward of our faith, the reward of our work, and the reward of our conduct to someone else. See, those helpless, those cages which seem to be broken and appear to be broken. How many times have we said it? Here's the way I see it. And then they leave you to the What does God see when God look at me? I said it once and I said it again. No one nor anything. No matter what you say nor what you do. Means enough to me to influence me to get in trouble with God. Not one, not a one, not even a multitude of one will I dare allow it to hold such a worth and such a value until I'm willing to break it off. May be wait, God may be waiting on me to stand my ground to break the chains on you. Amen. The door of the church is open. By way of letter, Christian experience, or candidate for baptism, the door of the church is open. If you're here this morning, will you come? Will you come? Will you come? When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the posse, Son, all of your sins are forgiven you. Because he communicated the reward of their faith, the reward of their works, and the reward of their conduct unto another person. And that person was made whole. 
was made whole. Whose healing is riding on your faith? Whose healing is riding on your words? Whose deliverance is riding on your conduct? No one knows. Not even the angels in heaven. That's why scripture tells us that the just must live by faith. And that faith cometh by hearing. And by hearing the word of God. Amen. And the word of God has told this story. About the you factor. In the miracles that God works. On others. The door of the church is open. By way of a letter, Christian experience, a candidate for baptism. If you're here this morning, will you come? I'm also speaking to our viewing audience. To those who are tuning in presently or may later on through the day, or through the week, or month, or year, tune in on our worship service. The invitation is also extended unto you. If something has been said or something has been done to assist God in assisting you to come to that conclusion, to come to that end that I desire to become a part of the Black Chapel Missionary Baptist Church family, then all you have to do is key into our comment section, your name, your telephone number, or in inbox the same, your name, your telephone number, along with virtual members. And I myself will personally contact you and we'll process the situation. The door of the church is open. By way of letter, Christian experience, or Kennedy for baptism. If you're here this morning, will you call? 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 You call? The door of the church is open. By way of letter, Christian experience or candidate for baptism. The door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We thank God for all that in which he has allowed to be said and done throughout the activity of our Sunday morning worship service. We know that something has been said. And we know that something has been done throughout its activity that can, if you allow it to, be of a help unto you. We thank God for our congregation this morning and we thank God for our viewing audience. But one of my favorite stories is the Wizard of Oz because it reveals so many positive truths in it while at the same time it's entertaining, it's humorous. It has so many great qualities about it. And one of my favorite scenes in it is when Dorothy stood before her fairy godmother and clapped her ruby red slippers together with closed eyes and hummed hard, hard and repeated, there's no place like home. There is no substitute for being at home. No substitute. And our God is not a deadbeat father. He has already laid up provisions for all of his children. And one of those provisions is a roof To go over our spiritual head. Which as 
is identified as being his house. His house. And there is nothing like when you're sitting around the table being fed. When a parent look across the table and see all of their children. Seat filled with the respected child. Not just with you nobody, but with his or her child. And every born again baptized believer, God has built a house for you. A spiritual refuge. Whereas that during meal serving time, he expects you to be at the table. May God continue to bless and forever keep you. At this time, we're going to ask those who are desiring, desiring prayer to please come forward. Let us pray. Our Father God, we, your handmaid servants, Father, we stand, Father, hearing your word, hearing your instruction, Father. And there are some, Father, that are standing, Father, that hear, and some that are near, Father, and some that are far. But, Father, we know that your hands of mercy and grace will touch all and heal all, and you're with all. Father, we thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace. And at this time, we still lift up our sick and our shut-in, Reverend and Sister Cole. Sister Bennett, Father, and many others that are on our prayer list, Sister Blue, Father, those that are on our prayer list, hear that we know. We thank you for what you've already done with Brother and Sister Bell, Brother Anderson, Father, just many others, Sister Anderson, Father, many others, Father. Right now, we just continue to ask your mercy and your grace be upon them. Father, we thank you for this foe here, but we know there are many others, Lord, as well. Knowing that your anointing is flowing, will touch. Father, we pray also for our young people, Lord God. We pray, Father, for our children, Lord God, that are in homes, Lord God. Father, we just witnessed some on last week with some terrible situations that our children are facing. But, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. We stand in the gap for them, Lord God. We stand asking, Father, knowing that you're not a deadbeat, a silent God that cannot hear, but you are a God that sees all and knows all. We pray, Father, your hands of mercy and grace will touch, Lord, as nobody can but you. Heal, Father God, as no one can but you. You said where two or three are touching and agreeing, you'll be a God in the midst. Those that are in this circle, Lord God, standing for themselves, for their families, and for others, petitioning the throne of mercy and grace, because you told us that we can come boldly, and we come boldly, Father. We come boldly to the throne of mercy and grace, Father, because the veil in the temple was rent in two. And, Father, we can come to you, the holy of holies, Lord God, no matter what the problem, no matter what the situation is, Father. We come in the name of Jesus. We come professing in the name of Jesus. We come asking in the name of Jesus. We come believing in the name of Jesus. Father, with your hands, Lord, of mercy and grace will touch as no one else can touch but you. Right now, Father, we humbly ask, as humbly as we can, Father, that you would touch, Lord God, beyond degree. Father, you can touch and all will be made well, all will be made whole, all will be restored, Father. And this is the kind of faith, Father, that we are petitioning to you today. Just as you heal the man with a sense of palsy, Father, we know that you can touch. Minds will be regulated. Hearts will be changed. Our problems and our issues, they're going to vanish, Father, because of you and you alone. And, Father, for this, we give you the praise, the glory, the honor, and all that's due to you. And, Father, we all say amen and amen. 
be it done according to our faith. Amen. 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 Let us all please stand for the benediction. Brother DeVinish, I need to see you for a minute before you leave. Let us all please stand for the benediction. Now until we meet again, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion with the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide from henceforth and forevermore. Let us all say together. <laughs> God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, you are dismissed.